Hi, my name is Alex Holacek. I work at Code Academy as a front end dev. Um, okay, so first of all, why would you want to use flip animations in your interface? And why do we even care to transition our interfaces from one state to another? So what does that add to the user experience beyond uh, some cool transitions uh, that might be eye-catching uh, if you're lucky? So I think Sarah Drasner put it really well in this quote that I'm going to read out as to why you might care about adding these transitions. She writes, transitioning between two states can reduce cognitive load for your user. Without these transitions, changes can be startling. They force the user to remap placement and even their understanding of the same element. It is for this reason that these effects become critical in an experience that helps the user feel at home and gather information quickly on the web. OK, so let's look at a little example of an interface with and without the flip uh, animation technique. So I made this little icon, demo, uh, icon store demo for, for this uh, talk, and we'll be looking at it uh, a couple times throughout the talk. Um, and I'm not a designer, so caveat there. But um, so here we've got a GIF of the user sorting uh, various icon sets that they can uh, buy and changing from a grid to a list view. Uh, it's quite abrupt. The uh, there's no transition. Um, here, let's look at what Flip gives us. Um, so here's the same set of transitions, but they're smoother. To my eye, at least, it's a lot easier to follow sort of what's going on with this interface. Again, you could quibble about timing, uh, but in general, I prefer this, this sort of view. And Flip lets us do this pretty easily. So before we get any further, I'm going to show you how to implement Flip from scratch. So first, uh, FLIP is an acronym that stands for first, last, invert, and play. So what does this actually mean? I think it was invented by Paul Lewis, or at least that's the first article I read about it. It was by him. Um, and I think it's been around for a, a little while. So the first part of FLIP is we have this element that we know is going to change, and we want to animate that change. So we know an update is imminent, and we cache, the, all, we cache information about the position of the element. So this is what that might look like. We know the square is about to change, um, and we're going to call the get bounded client rect uh, method on the square, and that gives us this nice handy dom rect object that has uh, top left width and height, and also some other stuff that we don't care about. So we've got that. And there's le last. So the update has occurred, and we're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to measure the new size, the new position of our element. And I will stand here now. We're, we're here. Um, yeah, so now this is sort of like the most co complicated and important part, the invert step. So this is what that looks like. The top four lines are, are calculating the translate and scale transforms we need to apply to cancel out whatever changes have just occurred. And we have to do this very quickly before the user has noticed any difference uh, or any, any movement in this element. So to find the necessary position deltas, we're subtracting the current values from the previous values. Um, to find the next necessary scale values, uh, scale deltas, we're dividing the previous size values by the current size values. So we know that we need to move the div back up and back 100 pixels, and we need to have its width and double its height. Um, and that's basically flip. So now we're going to just play the animation. We're going to add a maybe a simple CSS transition, and we're going to allow the div to smoothly trans, uh, transition back to where it was before. And that's sort of the simplest uh, implementation of flip. OK, so you might be asking, why do you need to do it this way? Why can't you just use translates and, tra uh, and various CSS animation just like you're used to? So let's look at, as an example, at an example of why Flip would be better in some situations. OK, before we go any further, uh, we should remind ourselves that we can really only animate these two CSS elements if we want to ensure performant animations. And that's because they're GPU accelerated. They don't cause the browser to have to do layout or um, repainting its transform and opacity. We can actually do a lot with these, just, just with these two elements. But um, yeah, so, so you could probably animate left or margin left or any of these uh, like, uh, attributes, basically, if you had like a really tiny element that didn't really affect the layout of the rest of the page. But once you start changing the layout of the page, you're going to really want to stick with these two um, properties. OK, so a designer comes to you, and they're like, um, I have this idea for this cool new animation. And I was wondering, like, can you cost it out? How difficult is it going to be to implement? And then you're really excited. You, and she shows you this incredible animation of the square getting bigger and filling the entire screen. And so if you're like me, you might think a little bit and say, yeah, this, this isn't too hard. I can totally do this. And you might write some code that looks a little bit like this. 
It's um, just a React component that listens to components that update, or uh, it listens to a change uh, in a prop that I can't quite see, but I think it's like full screen. Yep. And uh, when it detects the change, it's going to like measure the difference between the square and the size of the window, and then it's going to apply the translates, or apply the scales in this case, to make sure that it's a full size. Um, so this seems to work pretty well. Uh, you can indeed implement this animation using that technique. But things start to break down pretty quickly with this technique. Like as soon as the user changes this window screen, you're going to have to listen to that and you're going to have to update uh, your code. You might, uh, maybe the layout has started to change and now you're sort of managing some things that CSS used to handle for you because maybe you're using some absolute positioning and you're, you're sort of hard coding the positions of these elements. Um, so to me, what I just described seems more of an imperative way of dealing with layout animations. You're essentially giving tons of instructions to the browser, you're taking over the job of CSS, and it could get messy fast. Um, flip on the other side, on the other hand, seems a lot more declarative to me. Um, you just build your layouts like you're used to, you manage the transitions in between them, and then you're done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so why do Flip and React go well together? I'm gonna to talk about that now. It's, there are a few reasons that they, they work really well. So the first reason is that Flip facilitates us to be able to write React like we're used to. This was like the first thing I read when I learned how to, when I was learning how to do React. I think probably some few pe people are familiar with it. It's the thinking in React tutorial on the React uh, main documentation. And the number one step is you have to break your UI into component hierarchy and your components should have a single responsibility. They shouldn't really interact with each other so much. Um, you should really keep them separate. And flip uh, or transition animations seem to sort of go against that. They s s might require one component to morph into another component and it might initially seem difficult to understand how you would do that without having these components know, know about each other. The second thing I learned in React, basically, or like the, the second bad practice I was warned to stay away with, away from was excessive like dealing with the DOM. Like I should just let JSX do its thing and not really worry about that. Um, and that's another thing that Flip kind of lets us do is I'll show uh, you don't have to manage like cache elements and manage their movement around the screen all that much you're sort of like still pretty abstracted and your, your DOM handling code is pretty localized. Um, so here's an example, a really quick example from this, this demo app, like I have a card and I have a page that the card expands to. In, in the React app, they're totally separate. They don't know about each other. One is the card component and one is a page. And Flip just sort of makes, it, makes the illusion to the user that they're the same thing, uh, but the rest of the app doesn't care about it. So we can use Flip to con uh, create that sense of continuity. Okay, so React also makes it pretty easy to implement Flip because React has some really nice lifecycle methods that you can hook into. And uh, so let's remember this animation and talk about how we might implement it in React. So here are the two lifecycle methods that we care about. There's get snapshot before update and then there's component did update. So I think get, snap, get snapshot before update was introduced in React 16, and according to the docs, it's invoked right before the most recently rendered output is committed to, to the DOM. Uh, so we have this like split second where we can measure the DOM, and this is the first step of flip. Uh, and then uh, that's the information we return uh, from that method is then passed on to component did update, which is called right after the update occurs. And the cool thing about component did update is it's called before the user has seen any, anything rendered to the screen. So it's this like magical in-between state where you can measure, measure what's happened and like the browser can tell you what, what will appear, but the user doesn't see it yet. So you can do any sort of like changing around that you want to. Um, yeah, so we're gonna then Im implement flip and move our elements back to their previous positions so we can do that nice smooth transition in this case. Okay, so as you might imagine, there are several flip libraries that have cropped up so that you don't have to do, write everything from scratch in React uh, when, when, you, when you add this to your React apps. So I'm gonna go through a few of them. Uh, React flip move, I think is the most well known. It's really optimized for list transitions, not so much like scale uh, animations or anything like that, but it's like pretty battle tested and it's like really easy to use. So if you just want flip, uh, if you just want list transitions, that might be a good one to look at. Um, there's also React Overdrive, which sort of got me interested in this whole uh, thing. And React Overdrive doesn't actually use Flip. It just clones your elements and crossfades them, which is pretty flexible and it's really easy to implement. Um, 
but it's not quite as smooth as flip. You can kind of see some transitioning going on there. But it might be perfect for your use case, especially if you just want like a really quick solution. So I'm going to spend the rest of the talk talking about the library I wrote because uh, the pre-existing libraries didn't really meet my needs. And again, it, it's very possible that the other libraries are better for your particular use case. But I wrote this one, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, and yeah, so React Flip Toolkit, uh, I wrote it to ha have more flexibility and more power uh, than the, uh, the other options that I saw. So it offers some low-level components. So it requires a little more work from the developer to implement. So um, yeah, so if you want to do straightforward flip, uh, React Flip Toolkit can help you with that. This animation that I'm sure you're sick of seeing by now, um, it looked like this when we implemented from scratch, which is really not so bad. Um, but with React Flip Toolkit, it requires a lot less code. We see here we have a flipper component and a flip component. And I'm going to talk about what, what, what they do now. So the flipper component sort of uh, is the parent container component. It might be at the top level of your scene or even uh, above your router. And you provide it with a flip key every, that changes every time you want to transition to occur. Um, so how does the flipper know what it needs to update? Well, there's the flipped component. And you can wrap any element that needs to animate with a flip, flip component and provide a flip, flip ID to sort of match it across renders. Maybe you have a cool div in one uh, route, and then you have another cool div in another route, but they're totally different components. And then React Flip Toolkit will know that it needs to tween them. OK, so you can do simple things. But like honestly, if you're doing simple things, you probably just want to write it yourself from scratch because it's not so hard. Uh, the real reason to use React Flip Toolkit is it has uh, some more sophisticated things that it can do. So the, real world, the first real world problem that I uh, sort of bumped into and was sort of frustrated by is that as soon as you start to scale things, you start warping anything inside of them. Uh, and so all these transitions that I was thinking of that seemed pretty cool in my head ended up looking pretty uh, unpleasant when, when I implemented them. Um, so React Flip Toolkit gives you this like, option to apply a counter scale to children and cancel out what's going on uh, in there. So here's like a simplified view of that uh, card component that we just saw. And I've wrapped it with an additional flipped component that has an inverse flip ID that references the parent. We apply a counter scale. And now we can a counter scale and a counter transform so the children can uh, sort of animate however they want to. So it looks like this in the fixed version. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the other major problem that I saw is that I, I didn't really normally just want to use flip. I often want to have some like preparatory animations or some post animations. And I, need, I wanted tons of hooks or like some exit animations if things are leaving the DOM. And I wanted to make that easy as well. So for instance, here's just like straight flip. We're just flipping. Uh, we're just transitioning some elements from one point to another. It's still a little abrupt. Uh, React Flip Toolkit comes with these hooks that I've already discussed. Um, so this is sort of with the hooks. So like a, on a before animate, a, a after animate, um, they sort of allow us to manage some of the, the other parts of the DOM. And that's, this is sort of what that looks like. You've got these various hooks. Um, an, another thing that is pretty easy to solve ended up being that when I was applying flip, a lot of things were changing exactly at once, which didn't look super natural. So uh, React Flip Toolkit offers you this nice stagger option where you can stagger your transitions so it looks a little more, more natural. Cool. OK. And uh, as you might imagine, React Flip Toolkit maybe does a little bit of extra stuff so that you can have interruptible, interruptible transitions. If you don't do anything, you're going to get something that looks like this, which is pretty cool, actually, but probably not what you want in your app. <laughs> um, yeah, so all you kind of need to really do is like cache the current position and then strip the inline transform so they don't start compounding on each other. But React Flip Toolkit does that for you. So I guess that's nice. Um, cool. OK, so I have linked to my README. I would love if you made issues, if you had questions or uh, concerns about it. Uh, the demo app is there. I've got these articles are really great and go into a lot more depth than I did. I strongly recommend looking at them. Um, and. Yeah, and I really like this talk by Jake Archibald that helped me understand a lot about the way browser uh, and the, the browser and the event loop deal with animation and uh, explanation of why you can only animate transform and opacity. Thank you. So, uh, what would be the difference with using the CSS transition group? So CSS transition group works great if you just need like a simple CSS transition, but if you want one of these like major layout uh, transitions where one component sort of like changes into another component or um, you just want to handle the transition 
in between them. Like we kind of talked about at the very beginning about how like using CSS to take over some layout would, would start to become brittle in your app. So that's used more for like a fade-in animation or something. Um, and this is more like managing the positions, I guess, of various elements. I don't know if I explained it really well. The question was like, can you morph from one component to another? It, it depends on like what the components, if, if like, for instance, that, that card animation worked really well because it was just like a white square that turns into a white, a white page. And that worked perfectly with this and it looked really smooth. If you have like two completely different components, like two images that you want to crossfade, I would recommend using React Overdrive. Um, so it kind of like depends. Thanks.